Despite what you might have seen in the movies, no surgeon ever wants to have to do this. And along those lines, we never use one of these. Or one of these. But we do use this. If you haven't guessed yet, today we're going to be talking about emergency surgical airways. Let me explain. If someone can't breathe on their own, normally what we prefer to do in medicine is place a breathing tube through the mouth. Times when this might happen are when a patient's asleep for surgery, or if a patient has a really, really terrible pneumonia and they're not strong enough to do their breathing, or any other time where you need to sort of take over the body's breathing with a machine. Sometimes, however, you can't get a tube through the mouth, and that can either be due to swelling or due to trauma in the facial area, and you have to place a breathing tube lower down through the neck. I'm gonna show you some anatomy real quick. So we all have a lump on our neck. Uh, we call it an Adam's apple, and in medicine that's called the thyroid cartilage. Men have a bigger one than women. This little V here represents his thyroid cartilage. And right below that, we have something called our cricoid cartilage. So if you feel that little V in your neck, and then you go through a divot, and then you feel the next bump, that's your cricoid cartilage. And then below that, different layers of cartilage. We call them tracheal rings. Now, when we go to the operating room for a planned tracheotomy, that's a controlled situation where the patient already has a breathing tube here, we make an incision over these tracheal rings and remove a small piece of cartilage. The problem is, in an emergency situation, we don't have time to do that. And that's why we have a separate procedure that we do called a cricothyrotomy. I'm gonna show you how we do it. It should go without saying, but this is not medical advice, and what we're talking about today should only be done by medical professionals. Before we get started, I wanna point out that you should probably be standing up when you're doing this procedure. Right now, I am sitting down so that what I'm doing can be in frame and my face can be in frame, because otherwise you'll be kind of looking at my belly button if I stand up to do this. But this isn't typically something that's going to be done sitting down. It's gonna be in an emergency. So before I start, I'm just gonna show you the instruments we have. Ideally, you would have a hemostat. Um, I don't have one right now, so I have a Kelly clamp, but it's gonna accomplish the same thing, which is gonna be opening up and spreading to dilate the tract for myself. You're gonna have a scalpel, and you're gonna have an endotracheal tube. And also you'll have a syringe on hand to inflate the balloon in the endotracheal tube. I just don't happen to have one with me right now. It's important to know that if you don't have everything, really the only things you absolutely have to have are the scalpel and the ET tube. Because in a pinch, you can always make your incision and then spin the scalpel around and dilate the tract with the back of the handle. But I'll show you that in a second. So we're gonna get started. And to kind of orient you, this is the patient's face. Uh, the nose is here, the chin is here, and then this is the thyroid cartilage here. With your non-dominant hand, I'm a righty, so that's with my left hand, I'm pinching the thyroid cartilage here, and the tip of your finger should slide down into that cricothyroid membrane so you can feel it. So you've got that Adam's apple, you've got the cartilage here, the, the thyroid cartilage, and then just a little bit further you feel another bump. That's the cricoid cartilage. But between the two is a divot. That's your cricothyroid membrane. So you're gonna take your scalpel and you're gonna make a longitudinal incision. That incision is going to go directly over where that cricothyroid membrane is. So you're gonna make one stroke, then a second stroke, getting through the deeper layer, and then finally, a transverse stroke once you've popped in. Once you've popped through that membrane, you're gonna take your hemostats, and again, in this case, my Kelly clamp, and you're gonna spread just enough to dilate that tract. And again, this is the step where if it's an emergency and you don't have time to get a hemostat, or you don't have one handy, you can always use the back of that scalpel. See how I'm moving it around here to dilate the tract. And once that's done, you're gonna take an ET tube and you're going to advance it into that tract just far enough so that the balloon disappears. You're going to inflate the balloon. 
Once this is in, you're gonna start ventilating the patient through here. You're gonna secure the ET tube. One other point to note, if you have a bougie, that's sort of a long plastic, flexible plastic guide, and you can extend the bougie through your ET tube, that's great. You can always ideally have the ET tube on a bougie because that finds the track for you better. But again, if you don't, the bare minimum that you need is the scalpel and the ET tube.